Hey fam, I'm back. So, um, like I said in the one before this, um, again, I'll say at the beginning of this because I just want to get right into the rest of this part one of Don't Shrink Back. Um, this is the third part of Don't Shrink Back. There are two other parts. These are all three of these will be put together, posted together. What I will do for you is I will put them in a playlist. Once they are uploaded, you know, I'll put them in a playlist too as well so that it's easier to kind of watch all three parts. Also, I'll put at the end of this, this is the third and the final part of part one, but I will put the part one and part two of part one one um, in the end of the video so you'll be able to click it as well I'll put the links for them below I'm continuing on so you are you're more than likely gonna have to watch the first two parts this is a lot it's very it's a, it's a the reason why is because it's just a lot of it's a lot of meat because this is I'm now getting into the scriptural parts of this word that the Lord has me releasing this series and I'm getting into the scriptural portion of this part of it uh, which is part one is three videos because it's just it's a lot of beautiful word um, and a lot of encouragement so I'm gonna get into it I've already prayed I already covered y'all and we good so we just gonna get right into it I'm reading from scriptures Zechariah chapter 10 and Zechariah chapter 12 I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna read the scripture and whatever God wants to say he will say also after I finish reading I do have some notes revelation that little Lord has given for you guys and that will be it all right so let's get into the scripture now it says this pray to God for rain it's time and this scripture is actually called God's work of rebuilding which is again what God is in the process of doing for his church right now God is taking his initiatives to rebuild and he's building up us up oh thank you holy spirit thank you so much for that god is using what i'm releasing to you guys are going to be releasing over the next couple of days or however long god would have it in this series this don't shrink back series god is literally building us up so that we can be strong in him to rebuild his kingdom he's building us up to rebuild he's strengthening us to rebuild the reason why god wanted me to do this whole series is because he's in the process son, of rebuilding Building us spiritually because some of us and strengthening us right and refreshing us in his strength hallelujah he's in the process of doing that in us and he wants us to know who we are in him and to be able to stand firm in him because what the Lord was sharing with me is we're coming to a I keep hearing the word crescendo I guess we're coming to the height of things and something you know when some there's a buildup there's a lot of build uh, there's a build up of a lot of spiritual activities in the sense of the enemy is coming with foolishness and it's we're in spiritual warfare which we all know and so what God wants us to understand God really needs for us to remember who we are we are strong sons and daughters of the most high God the king of kings the lord of lords the creator of the universe we come from the father we have the spirit of God within us the spirit of God is power the spirit of God is power the spirit of God is unprecedented power you have something in your arsenal the devil does not have uh the devil is predictable you aren't i'm gonna say that again the devil is predictable you are not the devil can come with all types of familiar attacks things that we we know what we mean by familiar attacks familiar spirits familiar attacks familiar things that and he can use that as a deceptive distraction making you feel like like you're not delivered from something when you really are making you feel like why is this person x popping back in my life why is this friend popping back in my life and wants to be my friend but they really were not a good person and god got got rid of them oh well are they in my life again or is this happening because it's not finished is this happening because this person is supposed to be back in my life the enemy is using these things as a distraction so you make sure you always bring that to god don't just accept somebody back into your life that you know god done removed you got to go to god first i'll say that too but the enemy is using the amando bosa yeah there's somebody watching this where where it's like you feel like you haven't been delivered from something like you feel like certain things or certain attacks that you know the lord delivered you from you feel like you haven't been delivered because it's starting to happen again one thing i said in the first part 
of this part one is that the enemy is using a lot of familiar things to attack us. He's using he's using the spirit of familiarity. He's using familiar spirits and familiar 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 things. He's using our flesh to do this, right? He, you know, certain addictions that we've already been delivered from, certain things that we did. Um, also that the Lord has delivered you from that He has la that the Lord has delivered you from, that he saved you from, that he took you out of. And like, it's like these things are, are, are showing their faces again. And they're, 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 and I, uh, hallelujah. Like these things are trying to show their faces back in your life again. You're having dreams about things. You're you're having certain types of dreams. And you're like, what's going on? Is there something wrong? Am I doing something wrong? Did I do something wrong? I thought I was delivered from this. I thought this stopped. I thought this was supposed to be over. The enemy is very, very sly. He is really the father of lies and he is the best. Uh, 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 he's the number one narcissist who likes to, who will manipulate you into thinking something is for real, for real and gaslighting you, making you feel like, oh, you know what? Trying to make you in your mind say, oh, you know what? Maybe this isn't God. Maybe this is, maybe, maybe I am not, maybe I'm not delivered. Maybe I, this is not done when it is done, but he wants to slow down your process of elevation. He wants to slow down your process of elevation. So what is he going to do? He's going to try to distract you with something you don't already passed. He's going to just distract you with a, with a level you already done passed. He's going to try to pull you back and distract you so you don't move forward. Well, yasa commando bosanda. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil do that. And that is why God has me releasing this because he wants to remind you who you are. And he really is calling his sons and daughters that if you are in that, that what I was just talking about, if that's you, bring that to God. Don't sit in worry because that actually bring, that can also bring out worry and anxiety and fear. Don't let the enemy do that to you and distract you like that from the real task at hand. Let God deal with that. Get rid of that. Let God give you, let God deal with that and deal with the devil when it comes to that. Bring that to his feet and let him lift off that heaviness off you one time so he can help you get where you need to get to when you need to get there. Zechariah chapter 10. Pray to God for rain. It's time for the spring rain. Is it not spring now? Is spring not around the corner? Or no, it's spring not already here. All right. It's time for spring rain. It's time for spring harvest because there's a, there's a fall harvest and there's a spring harvest. Okay. It's time for spring rain. We're in the spring harvest now. Hadamashi. Thank you, Lord. We're in the spring harvest. Spring has sprung. We're in the spring harvest. It's time to pray for the spring rain to God, the rainmaker, spring thunderstorm maker, maker of grain and barley, or in other words, maker of provision, the one who is there, our provider. In other words, pray to God for rain. In other words, seek God first. In other words, don't worry about provision and how is this gonna go? How is this gonna happen? How are you gonna have where's this money gonna come from? How are you how are you gonna get money to this? How are you going to be able to do this? How are you going to get this? Be able to? No, God is saying, stop worrying about that. God is saying, stop, pay attention to him. Pay attention to him. Don't worry about that stuff. My sister Kristen said something this morning and it was something that she said she got from a video, but she said, I think it was a video that she watched and it said this person, she was worrying about something and praying to God that God would favor her and that God would give her favor because things weren't moving the way she needed them to move. She was praying to God to move. In other words, she was trying to speed God up and God said to her, why are you praying to me for something that I've already established? Established. So you don't have to continue to pray to me about this same thing. You don't have to continue to, to come back and ask me for it or come back and ask me for it to happen faster. No, there is a set time. There is established a point of time for it to happen. So when I speak a thing, when God speaks a thing, you need to understand that it is, it's finished already. There's just an appointed time for it to happen, for it to occur. And so before it occurs, our job is to thank him for it. Our job is to allow him to prepare us for it it and that's just it but our job is to keep our eyes focused on him and what God needs us to do so I'm going down now to verses three to five which say this God of the angel armies will step in and take care of his flocks, the people of Judah. He'll revive their spirits, which is what I just said God wants to do for us now. He'll revive their spirits, make them proud to be on God's side. Hallelujah, right? Right? Refresh our faith in him. Remind us who he is to us. God will use them then. This is what I was just saying because he wants, this is what he wants to do with you who's watching this right now and me and all of his sons and daughters. God will use them when he has done, finished restoring you, reviving you. He said he will use them in his 
work of rebuilding and use them as foundations and pillars. Use them as tools and instruments. Uh, use them to oversee his work. There'll be a workforce to be proud of. Hallelujah. Working as one, their heads held high, striding through swamps and mud, courageous and vigorous because God is with them undeterred by the world's thugs. Um, and the margin I have here, some revelation that the Lord gave me saying that he is taking over. He wants to take over. I spoke, I already spoke about this before, but God is taking over. He wants to take over with this new breed, with his new breed, with his new breed, who he is raising up right now, right? His His rising remnant. And, and he's, he, 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 he's saying, when he said God will use them in his work of rebuilding, God will use them. His, use them as tools and instruments. Well, God wants you to remember, right? Again, remember who you are. You are a tool. You are God's strong weapon. You are God's tool. God is going to use us as his tools to create revival, to rebuild the body of Christ the right way, to reconfigure, to reset everything, to go back to the basics of what being a Christian, to go back to the basics of what God had meant for the church to be to the world. God is rising up these new breed, these new people, this new breed of Christian. He's using us to remind people. It's about the relationship. Relationship with God creates change through Christ. Jesus is the only way. There is no other way, yeah, to battle that lie of the enemy that the enemy has been spreading, to make people think that there's new age and you can pull from all different types of religion and create your own and then there's that there's many different paths to God. Many different paths to God. What? No, that's not it, boo-boo. It's not. And we have people that are in the media, in the limelight, talking about how there's different ways. You got to be so careful. This is the crap that is being built up, that the enemy is building up, that God is going to use his body, Hanamasike, his repaired body. God is repairing the body of Christ right now. And when the body of Christ is repaired, the devil better look out, watch out because the devil is about to get a run for his money because God is going to use his children to tear down every lie of the devil, to tear down every one of those deceptions that all these people in the world are trying to conjure up to try to distract and pull people out of understanding the truth. Um, God was reminding me also with this scripture, right, where it says he will use them as his work in his work of rebuilding the foundations um they will be foundations they'll be pillars the foundations they will he will use them as foundations because they will understand the foundations of christianity they will understand the foundations of Christianity, of the gospel. And God was reminding me of Peter when he said, on this rock, I will build my church. As Peter walked with Christ and knew Christ and knew who he was and understood him and had a relationship with him closely. So God, so Christ was able to, Jesus was able to teach him, which is essentially like God teaching Peter to prepare him to go out into the world. And so that is what God is saying to us right? On this rock, he's saying to you, on this rock, I will build my church, right? We may feel insignificant and weak, but God's strength is coming. So don't you worry. The enemy likes to make us feel weak and insignificant, especially when he's attacking us and we feel actually physically weak. He's trying to make you feel like you can't do nothing. Don't worry. God's got something. Don't worry. And the rest of the scripture is just talking about God is equalizing the body, right? Like what I, like I was saying earlier, he is creating, nobody's better than anybody in the body. No, no, no judgment. It's going to be a judgment-free zone. No judgment. God loves people into salvation. There's a lot of children, there's a lot of his kids that have been hurt by a form of the church, a form of Christian. That is not the correct form. That judges from the outward appearance, which is not what God does. What God is saying is, ain't nobody, it doesn't matter what your title is. It doesn't matter if your title is pastor, preacher, or prophet. It doesn't matter what your title is. You are not better than anybody else. If you've known God for 50 years and somebody else has known God for 10, you're not not better than that person. You're still not above that person. That means you don't have a right to judge them as such, right? You don't have a right to judge them in hate or judge them in condescending, looking down on them type of way. No, no, no. That is not acceptable in what God is rebuilding. It is not acceptable. That's not the way Jesus walked and acted and did things. That is not the way he wants his body to do things. So God is in the process now of really softening hearts and trying to get us to understand that and trying to bring us to a point of bring his body to a point of even if we have been like that i mean the lord had to kind of you know reprimand me sometimes for you know judging being judgy because i used to be 
before I actually got into a relationship with God and I was more religious minded um, instead of relationship minded with, with God. I was very judgy of people in certain types of situations. God knocked me down a couple of pegs real quick and I learned God and God gave me his heart for people and had me understanding like you can't be like that, you know, and I had to repent. I had to say, God, I'm sorry for thinking of your children like that and treating them like that. Let's see. The rest of the scripture says, chapter 10 says, I know their pain. He said, I'll save the people of Joseph. I know their pain. I will make them good as new. They'll get a fresh start as if nothing ever happened. And why? Because I'm their very own God. I'll do what needs to be done for them. The people of Ephraim, God's children, the people of Ephraim, their lives brimming with joy. Their children will get in on it too. It says, I'll whistle and they'll all come running. I've set them free. Oh, how they'll flourish, right? We're about to flourish. God's about to flourish his children after the repairing, the reviving, the strengthening again. They will remember me in faraway places and I'll bring, they will come back. I'll bring them back. That revival, bringing people back. Reunion revival is what's going to happen. And I'm going to put the rest of the scripture. I'm going to put every scripture down here so you guys can go with the Lord and study them more with, for yourself as well. I'm going to go to verse 10, uh, chapter 12, which is talking about this as well. It says God's decree. You know what? I'm going to read the scripture. Actually, I just remembered I wanted to read this scripture in a different version of the Bible because I want you guys to really get the gist of what God is saying. So Zechariah chapter 12, the New Living Translation, it says this, on that day, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock. What was I just talking about? This is what God wants to do for his children and in us. I'll make Jerusalem an immovable rock. All the nations will gather against it to try to move it, but they won't. We're going to have that foundation. We're going to be strong and we're going to be like a tree planted. The enemy won't be able to move us. When we allow God to do this reviving work in us in this reminding and refreshing us into understanding and remembering our identity in him. It says on that day, they can try to move it, but they will only hurt themselves. So anyone who comes against God's children, they can try to move you, but they are only going to be hurting themselves, not you, because you know who you are. You're fighting for the kingdom. On that day, says the Lord, I will cause every horse to panic and every rider to lose his nerve. God's about to disorient. God is disorienting the enemy. God has disoriented the enemy that is coming against you and us. He he said, every horse will panic and every rider to lose his nerve. I will watch over the people of Judah, but I will blind all the horses of their enemies. And the clans of Judah will say to themselves, the people of Jerusalem have found strength in the Lord of heaven's armies, their God. People will see and be like, oh my gosh, God is with these people. Nobody can mess with them. On that day, I will make the clans of Judah like a flame of fire, of Holy Ghost fire, hallelujah, that sets a wood pile ablaze or like a burning torch among sheaves of grain burning and getting rid of all that tear and that chafe, burning away what does not belong, hallelujah, manda, robosa, what is not of God. They will burn up all the neighboring nations right and left while the people living in Jerusalem remain secure, hallelujah. And so um, I'm going to just read you the revelation of some more revelation of these scriptures in Zechariah chapter 10. What he was saying, what God wants me to say to you in reading that is that he said to tell y'all, Yahweh is taking charge or taking charge now to help us take authority, our authority back, our kingdom authority. He's helping us take charge and, and take our authority, kingdom authority. We're no longer on our own. You are not alone. You are not alone. He said this. He said, remind them you are no longer on your own. You're not fighting this by yourself. And so if you felt like you were alone, God wants me to tell you, you are not alone, my child. That's what he wrote. He said, remind them. He said, you are not alone, my child. He's bringing us back to our testimony, right? He's bringing us back to our testimony. In one of the scriptures, it says, he's bringing his children back to Gilead. And when I looked up a translation of Gilead, it means the hill of testimony. You know, you overcome by your testimony, by the blood of the land of the word of lamb and your word of your testimony. God is even going to begin reminding you of where he took you from to even rebuild your faith and your trust and your strength in him to remind you where he took you from for you so that you can say, oh, hey, wait a second. Yeah, God did do that for me. Yeah, God is a good God. Look where he took me from. I forgot that he did that for me because sometimes the enemy wants us to can cause us to forget. All the attacks can cause us to forget. So he's bringing us back to that to strengthen us throughout that process of re-strengthening. What else is there, Lord? God is saying that a supernatural drawing of his children 
back to the throne, back home to him is happening, drawing back, bringing people back to salvation, bringing people back to the prodigals, bringing you back to the, who you know God to be, who we know God to be, to him. In Zechariah chapter 12 is a very much also, like I said, God will equalize the body. God will make no man will be, it doesn't matter what your title is, because that's a lot of, that's an issue right now in the body of Christ as well. These titles and people thinking that just because you're this and this and this, and then that causes problems because then when people fall, when pastors fall, when prophets fall, when they do human things, God has an issue because we've, people in the body of Christ have gotten to the point where we are idolizing these prophets. We are looking to them first before we look to God. God does not want that. My main goal is to lead y'all to God. I'm not more than you. I'm not greater than you. I'm not higher than you. I'm a sinner saved by God's grace that God has given me a the authority and a responsibility to do what I'm doing. But God, just like I said, you are to God's weapon, instrument of, of, of war that he wants to use against the devil who has a purpose and a plan in this world. And God is, is equalizing the body. God wants unity in his body again. Nobody's thinking they're better than anybody because they're in a certain position and nobody is thinking somebody is better than them because they're in a certain position. We are all human beings susceptible to sin. Doesn't matter how high in in you are so god wants us to remember that it's all about it's all about bringing it back to god and refocusing our eyes on him i'm going to go ahead and close this out luke chapter 12 and 22 did i really want to read it in the message version because i just like what it says this it says don't fuss about what's on the table at meal times or if the clothes in your closet are in fashion there is far more to your inner life than the food you put in your stomach more to your out more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body look oh no sorry look at the ravens free and unfettered not tied down to a job description carefree in the care of god and you count far much more god gives such attention to the wildflowers most of them never even seen don't you think he'll attend to you take pride in you do his best for you it says what i'm trying to do and this is the lord speaking right this is christ speaking what i'm trying to do here is to get you to relax not to be so preoccupied with the attacks that the enemy is bringing you the description discouragement the discouragement of like oh god told you to do that well how are you going to do that when you ain't got no money you ain't got no job you don't have a house how are you going to get this house when you got bad credit all these foolish things that the enemy is using to attack us as well he's saying he's trying to get us to relax and not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to god's giving people who don't know god and the way he works fuss over these things but you both know both god and how he works so what steep yourself that means that means drown yourself in steep yourself in god reality god initiative god reality the truth focus on god's will and your truth that god has over your life god's reality you live in kingdom you're a kingdom child god's initiative the things that god wants you to do your purpose what god has for you to do and if you don't know focus on that ask the lord say lord what would you have me do while i'm waiting for this thing lord what would you have me do what do you want to tell me maybe god wants to instruct you on your purpose and tell you what to do give you information insight god initiative god God provisions, you'll find all everyday human concerns will be met. Don't be afraid of missing out. Don't be afraid that it's not going to happen for you just because you see somebody else is happening for somebody else or you see it happening for somebody else over here. Don't be afraid and don't allow the enemy to use that to cause you to be fearful that, oh, well, if it's happening for this person, it still hasn't happened for me. So what? No, no, no. God wants you to forget that. Take that out of your mind right now. Because if it's in their neighborhood and you're and we're all children of God, we're all brothers and sisters, God doesn't favor one more than the other. Remember that too. The Father wants to give the very kingdom itself and that's the end of that scripture i love you so much that's it i'm done this is the end of part one of the don't shrink back series of videos that i will be titled series of videos that i will be releasing over the next couple of weeks for y'all it's a lot it's lengthy it's a lot of good stuff that god really wanted me to release to you guys i've had to split up the videos but hey you gotta do what you gotta do to get out what i gotta get out for you guys that god wants me to get out i love y'all so very much and I pray that this blesses you. Look out for part two of Don't Shrink Back. I'll again say this is the third portion of part one. I will put part one and two of part one. Part one A and B, I will put the links in. So every video of these part A, B, and C, I will put the links to the previous one so that you guys can like watch it all in order for you guys as well. Anyway, I love y'all so much and I will see you in the next one. Look out for it. It'll be up soon. Bye.